once again with our Friday, June 26th edition of News and Death. First up, Fire Guts, NDS Furniture Factory, West Coast Demerara. More in this report. NDNS Furniture Factory of Lot 40 La Jealousy, West Bank Demerara, was gutted in a fire Thursday night. A neighbor said the alarm was raised by the security guard at the location, and her son then called out the owner. Um, do the watchman see the fire force? And he alert my son, and my son alert the, the owner. And that was it. And the owner get up and me get up after. Workers, them and others, neighbors, helpers, them fetch out everything. Save some furniture. Mm-hmm. Save a bin in the bottom flat. Shah Mahajo, the proprietor of the business, said he was asleep in the upper floor when his neighbors called to alert him that there was a fire. I uh, just rushed down, asked him to call the fire service, and I went up back there to get a pouch with my passport and an ID card and stuff like that. I couldn't get it. When I got out, I hit back the door, the smoke, so I had to jump in the other side of the yeah, so. It is, especially like workers, you know, I show up to work today, and this is what I got. Friday is a pay day, I expect, you know, to come to work today and get a pay at the end of the day, and this is what I reach here. Plus, apart from that, we had customer furniture here. Well, we're supposed to deliver like cupboards and beds. We're supposed to deliver them Tuesday, which they already finished just like the spray yesterday in the spray room and all, all damage. He said this is a major setback for him as he estimates his losses from his initial assessment to be in the millions. Well, exactly what damage is. But it's a lot. We have our factory there, we got a lot of raw material. We now we cut up and there's like fabric, foam, wood. A lot, a lot of our material. And unfinished work, there's a lot also. Too. And the finished work, there's a lot. Too. For 18 staff. Yeah. Mm. yeah, what happened? Because of the pandemic, the full staff now work. The people who got like um, commitment, wife and kid, or the single parents, we give them work. Mm. Mm. So the fire service came on time, but the fire was needed? Yeah, the fire, the fire service came on time, but the fire was already like, we couldn't, they couldn't control. The factory, but what they do, they try to take save this building a little. And they try to save. Well, they did a wonderful job. I really appreciate they come and they do a good job. Do you see yourself putting up yourself back here and getting back to this? Well, uh, I, I will, I will, but I don't know exactly when and how. I will. I'm not a guy I can throw back or, or fall down and stay there. I like to get up. Firefighters were back on the scene this morning doing their mopping up exercise and investigations to ascertain the origin of the fire. Marlon Wilson, sub-officer of the Guyana Fire Service, said when the fire service arrived on the scene, one building was already engulfed in flames. We were able to surround the fire and contain most of the damage to that one building. However, the buildings on the right and the left sustained minor damages. 18 persons were employed with the company, but due to the coronavirus, the full complement of staff has not been at work. The business has been in operation for 27 years. New Amsterdam man wanted. Elroy Oral Bristol is wanted by police for the possession of narcotics for the purpose of trafficking. A media release stated that the offense was committed at Patrick's Dam on Guys Avenue, New Amsterdam Burbies on June 23rd. Anyone with information that may lead to the arrest of Bristol is asked to contact the nearest police station or call 911. The police added that all information will be treated with the strictest confidence. Melissa Khan news in depth. More news after this break. Wouldn't it be nice if we didn't have so much waste to dispose of in the landfill? Well, composting can help us reduce the waste we dispose of by turning our organic waste into compost, which can be used to improve the quality of our soil. Composting is very simple and convenient. You can compost using organic waste such as vegetable skins or fallen leaves and cut grass and put this in a composting bin or pile. Compost can help your garden grow healthy plants while reducing your volume of waste. It's a really good way to keep our communities clean and healthy. So, let's all start composting our waste. Find out how easy it is. Call us on 226-2189 or 227-8429 or visit our website, moc.gov.gy. A message from the Ministry of Communities in collaboration with the Inter-American Development Bank. Are you washing your hands correctly? 
Here are some tips on when and how to wash your hands. Step 1. Wet your hands with clean water. Step 2. Then apply soap. Step 3. For 10 to 15 seconds, lather your palms together. Always remember to pay attention to your fingers, especially your nails and tips. And don't forget the back and between of your fingers. Step 4. Rinse hands with clean water for about 20 seconds. Step 5. Dry hands with a clean paper towel or tissue. But when should you wash your hands? After using the toilet, before and after eating, preparing or handling uncooked food, after playing with pets or caring for animals, after sneezing and coughing or blowing your nose, before and after changing babies or caring for others. Frequent hand washing or using a hand sanitizer with alcohol as an alternative will remove viruses and bacteria from your hands. A message from the Ministry of Public Health in collaboration with PAHU WHO. Hi Guyana, it's your boy Kimo Paul here. Remind you to stay at least one meter away from persons or three feet to avoid contracting the flu or the COVID-19. It is also important that we stay at home and to avoid gatherings of more than five persons. We must all play our part, so let's protect ourselves and our families from COVID-19. We must all play our part. The Ministry of Public Health cannot do this alone. So let's all come together and fight this virus. For further information, check our website, www health.gov.gy or visit the ministry's Facebook, Instagram, YouTube or Twitter page. Shh. It's your new secret. The all-in-one weapon for perfecting imperfections and capturing flawless skin. A lot of brands forget women of color or just don't understand that we come in all shades. From caramel to ebony, there is such a range. Iman Cosmetics is for every woman and features a line of skincare products and cosmetics including 16 foundation shades, powder, concealer, lipstick, blush, eyeshadow, highlighter and BB cream. Visit us at Lot 75 Swamp Section, Rosal Town. That's behind the market. Or call 337-4422 or 688-9249. Oh. Chinese man, long time in a hear or see you. Oh, I didn't really feel in too good. Uh -uh. He never gave me no coronavirus, not me. Like she you know you can get COVID-19 from a phone call? What? Hear this? When somebody cough or sneeze, they spray small liquid droplets from their nose or mouth. If you're too close, you could bleed in the droplets, including the COVID-19 virus if the person coughing got the virus. But bops, just like that, you get coronavirus. So, stay at least one meter or three feet distance between yourself and everyone, especially those who are coughing or sneezing. Or better, stay home and don't go out liming. Hey, Radika. Yeah, Chinese man, I'll be contact all you want. Now we can hear and see you. This is a message from the Ministry of Public Health in collaboration with PAHO WHO. Welcome back. CCJ to hear jurisdiction arguments in the PPP's appeal of Court of Appeals ruling. More in this report. The case management conference in the appeal of Guyana's appellate court decision in the Eslin David matter was heard on Thursday, June 25th at the Caribbean Court of Justice. The appellate court ruled that it is only valid votes that should be counted. The conference was held virtually. 
The full panel of judges was led by the court's president, Adrian Saunders. The order handed down by the court was for leave to be given to the governing APNU AFC and the United Republican Party to intervene in the proceedings. The principal issues in the matter are whether Guyana's Court of Appeal had jurisdiction to entertain the application made to it. If the Court of Appeal lacked such jurisdiction, what is the consequence to the proposed appeal to the CCJ? If Guyana's Court of Appeal had rightfully assumed jurisdiction, then what is the consequence of that to the proposed appeal to the CCJ? And if Guyana's Court of Appeal rightly assumed jurisdiction and exceeded its jurisdiction, what is the consequence of that to the proposed appeal to the CCJ? Senior Council Lead Attorney representing the Opposition People's Progressive Party in the matter, Douglas Mendes, attempted to extract from the court an order for the GCOM's Chief Elections Officer, Keith Lowenfield, to withdraw his election report, which was submitted to the Commission. The report was submitted to the Commission on Tuesday morning before the Caribbean Court of Justice issued any direction for the Commission to cease taking any further action. However, Justice Winston Anderson out of Jamaica said the CCJ should not entertain the matter as the order needed to have been issued by the appellate court. Not sure just how far we um, can profitably go interrogating the, the order made by the, the Court of Appeal. I, I assume that no approach has been made to the Court of Appeal by the applicants in relation to what the chief elections officer did or did not do. Um, my, my interest is, is just to clarify that whatever the chief elections officer did or did not do took place before the order of this court. President of the CCJ, Justice Saunders, then said, we cannot undo what was done by the chief elections officer. What I would say in relation to this matter, we cannot undo what was done by the chief elections officer. Um, if council wish to include in their submissions whether what was done was lawfully done or whether there is to be no consequence or whether there's a consequence to what was done, then, then you, you're free to as in Davis lawyer, former Trinidad and Tobago Attorney General and Senior Counsel John Jeremy expressed his concern of attempts being made by senior persons in and outside of the region who are attempting to influence the outcome of the proceedings. Justice Saunders, in his response, gave the assurance that the court's decision will be based on the submissions made by the attorneys involved. I can rest assured that the bench is going to treat with this matter only on the basis of the material that you and your colleagues, those with you, those against you, those who are in this court today, on the basis of what you submit. And that is what is always done, certainly by this court. So you can rest assured that we are not going to have regard to anything which is being said outside of the court and which does not feature as a relevant part of these proceedings. The appeal court ruled that more valid votes cards should be used to determine the outcome of the elections. And that has brought us to the end of our news for tonight. For these and other stories, visit our website at rdproductiongy.com or our Facebook and Instagram page at Royston Tricks Production. On behalf of our news team, thank you for joining us and join us again on Monday for more news. Good night.